YouTube. Oh. Howdy YouTube. So, um, I leave rebooted someone's uh, T400. They actually recognized me off of uh, Luke Smith's podcast and sent me an email and turns out they lived close by. So, um, I figured I'm going to give some tips for leave rebooting a T400 or it'll, maybe it'll turn out to be a tutorial. Who knows? But, um, first off, this T400 was one of the most mint T400s I ever saw. It was a refurbished one from Micro Center, treated with a little bit of Bowisol on the top. And, well, aside from some plastic welds and the fact that every screw on this T400 was tightened to the max, where it was very hard to get some of them undone without stripping them, and I wasn't physically capable of doing it. Uh, I've actually disassembled a T500 before, so I don't think they're supposed to be like this, but then again, I have disassembled a X200S, which was kind of in a similar situation, but that one had water, uh, slight, uh, not, slight water, not quite damaged, but the screws had some rust on them. But this one looked clean, and it looked like they went through everything. So, I guess now on to the tips. So, First off, the T400 is a bit screwy. You might say the T400 has 400 screws. Okay, I'm done with the horrible puns, but... Um, so, yeah, uh, it took about probably the entire day. Like, I, I don't quite remember when we finished. It was probably sometime during the night. But part of it, though, was I did actually have to... Uh, install windows on something to flash the latest EC firmware because you should check if it has the latest BIOS to know if your ThinkPad has the latest EC firmware and this is the latest OEM BIOS. If you want to find the OEM BIOS, they are on Lenovo's site if you just type in ThinkWiki T400 BIOS on your computer and on your favorite search engine you will find that latest BIOS for the T400 and then you just download that up, have the latest DC firmware and flash Weaver boot. And since Lenovo doesn't really update uh, EC firmware from laptops that are 10 years old, you probably won't ever have to flash the OEM BIOS on it again. So, the, um, um, but, uh, to get on with it, um, the disassembly process isn't that bad. Uh, all the screws on the T400 are labeled on the back. So you can pretty much just say though you're gonna have to remove all of them because you're gonna just have to disassemble the entire bottom of this. I would recommend taking photos and potentially even labeling the screws. I, I used uh, bags and I think I got up to the letter F for like A type screws, B type, all the way to F type screws. So it's quite a bit more complicated than an X series ThinkPad or even a T60, at least in my opinion. But another thing about this model is the speakers are quite a bit better. In fact, there's more than a singular one that faces down. So because of that, it is a little bit more complicated for the wiring. All of them also uh, seem to have GSM. I haven't found one taken apart that doesn't have the GSM wires too for the, uh, I guess, or not GSM, WN antennas. So there's quite a bit more wires. Like the X200S, uh, the 1440 by 900 panel doesn't have WN. So that isn't really that bad for disassembly, but it can be a bit confusing. You also kind of have to disassemble literally every screw you see once you get the keyboard and uh, mouse pad off and the third piece of plastic that goes around. And that combined with the wiring, uh, it will take a bit of time. But uh, after you've done that, you have to, well, remove the heat sink. So when removing the heat sink, uh, be kind of careful unless you bought extra thermal pads. 
Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad idea to replace a thermal pad, but it's not mandatory unless you like tear or rip it up or like have a little spot inside it. Uh, I would also check the uh, temps once the system's built, maybe using like uh, the LM sensors package and just run that in a little loop with a bash script and run something application intensive and see how hot your computer's getting. A T400's temps should be quite a bit lower than the X series based off my experience with it. Um, so after you got it completely disassembled down to the motherboard, you get to flash it. And uh, this is why I would say this is a weekend project if you haven't flashed anything with Weaverboot before because I was just able to, first I set a MAC address on the, uh, I guess, ROM. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it would be suggested. There's other ways to go about it too, but that's like one surefire way to make sure your MAC address is like zero, zero, etc. So, I would do that, flash it, and then test it with just the screen, the yellow power connector on the side plugged in to a power adapter, and the heat sink screwed on, so it'll heat up really quick. And after that, um, if it posts, try uh, booting some software. You, uh, Weberboot's a little bit more sensitive to RAM issues than the OEM BIOS. So there might be some slight chance of RAM incompatibility. I think you can't use a 4 gigabyte stick and a 2 gigabyte stick, for example. Uh, but if they're the same brand, you shouldn't have any issues at all. And it should just start right up. And you probably can even have it boot like Tristel or uh, Debian in this state. So just make sure the heat sinks on. So after you know it works, well, actually, I should first state, if it doesn't w work, make sure you back up the OEM BIOS so in case there's some weird compatibility issue, you can still reassemble your computer and have a working computer. <laughs> so, and if it just doesn't recognize the flash clip, there's a few things you can do. For example, one of them is basically just setting the SPI speed low if that doesn't work and it's like at set at like 128 or something ridiculously slow like that, you probably have to shut down the Raspberry Pi, re like pretty much just adjust the flash clip so it's on there well. I suggest getting a Pomona flash clip, but uh, I've had some reports go either way with like the Chinese uh, flash clips, but, but with, it's typically like a no name sort of situation. But I've had a lot of difficulties with them, even though they're quite a bit cheaper than the Pomona's. But the Pomona's range from like $8 to $16. So it's not that big of a cost to potentially save you a fair bit of time. And you can use like a Raspberry Pi, and if it, you have to make sure SBI is enabled. To if you're using a Raspberry Pi, I've never used a BeagleBone, but you can also do it with that, or really any sort of flashing device that's capable of running flash ROM. So, once it boots up and posts, and you don't touch your hand to the uh, pretty much overheating processor, if you forget that heat sink, are ready to reassemble. And hopefully you, you took good photos or opened the service manual because there's quite a bit of screws. Um, you have to keep in mind that they have like a magnesium chassis covering a piece of plastic and um, if I didn't mention it already there's two sneaky screws that are kind of on the side but well, you can remove most of the plastic and it'll be hung up on those so when you're actually removing the plastic during disassembly be a little bit careful like don't yank on it and make sure every single screw is removed but after that you get the fun of putting all of the screws back together and that's going to take a while but if you took uh, if they're labeled you took good photos or you just cheated and used the parts unit it
wasn't this one, by the way. I, I had a $5 one that was pretty banged up. Anyways, though, once it's reassembled, you're pretty much done. I mean, reassembly will take a fair bit of time, so I would give it the project like in one day if you want to spend the entire day doing it, it or like two days if you're just like kind of uh, inexperienced with Weber booting. But um, on the rank of Weber booting difficulty, this is probably closer to the higher end. This is to be like the X60 or T60, which you don't have to open up or do anything with, except maybe replace the Wi-Fi card, which is actually optional. You can actually have the Intel firmware on there, the Weaver Boot, and the Wi-Fi card will still work, even though Weaver Boot site says differently. There's also, um, you know, like the X200, which is about as difficult as core booting an X220 or Weaver Boot an X200. And then towards the upper range, it's like uh, the X200S and the X200T, you have to like solder the WSON 8 chip, which is a little bit of a pain. And then I'd rank the T400 about that. So, also the plastic bag method wasn't the best. Some of the screws got lost from the plastic bag. So, if you're gonna do this often, I would think of a better organizational system, maybe something with cubbies, but, I guess that's it. Peace uh, and have a good one. Bye.